welcome to the Morningstar series market reaction. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Bearings Kim Doe to share his outlook for 2019. Hello Kim. Good morning. So 2018 was very much dominated by politics and in particular the trade war. What can investors in Asian equities and in particular China equities expect from 2019? 2019, I think that um, hopefully we'll see some easing of the uh, escalation of the trade war talk. Uh, and also hopefully we'll see the US Federal Reserve actually um, at some stage declaring that they have reached a neutral uh, rate of interest rate. And that would be very helpful for Asia because, uh, as you know, Asian markets really can't rise too much when the US dollar is strong and when the Fed fund rate is rising. But if the Fed fund rate was to pause and the US dollar were to um, come down a little bit, that would be very helpful for Asian equity markets. And what about instruments that governments and indeed central banks are implementing here in Asia? Because it's not like the Bank of China or the Chinese government has been sitting back passively over the mm -hmm. last year, is it? There has been some stimulus that's come through. Yes, yes, there has been. But I think that uh, unlike the, um, the episode of uh, 2008, 2009, when we had the gigantic um, uh, uh, fiscal package, and unlike 2015, 16, when we also had another fairly big um, a fiscal and monetary stimulus package. This time around, I think that uh, President Xi and um, and the State Council are a little bit uh, more uh, prudent about injecting too much stimulus into the economy because it may go into speculative areas like the property market or some other areas where uh, the productivity uh, is not very um, very high or helpful. So that's why I think that they have been quite uh, prudent about um, um, about trying to inject um, or, or implement policies to help the economy. But definitely the impact of all these um, actions will translate into a slightly better recovery from, I, we think that the second quarter of next year, we'll see a bounce in the Chinese economy from that time on, yeah. So of course active managers see turbulence such as we've experienced this year as an opportunity to buy, although individual investors often get quite scared during those times. What do you foresee in terms of volatility for 2019? More of the same or do you expect it to be a little bit more positive next year? Um, we think that uh, this year, uh, as you said, was domina dominated by two very big things, trade war escalation and the, Fed and, and the US Federal Reserve. F as far as next year is concerned, if, if the trade negotiations and the trade negotiations appear to actually be going quite well because President Xi and, and China have been prepared to actually uh, cut back on the uh, US autos tariffs and buy soybeans again. So you know, this makes the US farmers you know, happier because the US farmers actually receive a subsidy from the US government, but they don't want that. You know, farmers are very proud and independent, and independent people. So they want to actually sell things at market price and not relying on the government for subsidies. So I think that's a good thing. And also um, the fact that, you know, we have 90 days in order to try to negotiate, I think that's a good thing. So that will help to lower volatility somewhat next year. The second thing is the US Federal Reserve. So if the US Federal Reserve hits a neutral rate at some stage, it could be two rate hikes from now or three rate hikes from now, we, we don't know. But uh, we think that at some stage, perhaps by mid-year next year, the Fed might say, OK, I think that we've done sufficiently now. So we, let's pause and, and see what the impact of all this on the US economy is. So those two factors combined together, I think that should lower volatility at some stage in 2019. Kim, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.